I am confident in each decision that I make because I know that my inner voice keeps me on my spiritual path naturally and easily. No matter which way I turn, which road I choose, I am lovingly supported and taken care of. I know this in my heart. I Hi, this is Clever Sausage and welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you another video presentation, this time with a different theme of what I've discovered. So if you like this video that I'm presenting you, uh, subscribe by pushing the icon and leaving your comments in the comment section below. Do it now before you forget so you won't miss out on any videos that I present you every day at 4 o'clock today we're going to talk about something that I discovered as I just mentioned okay it's about Bruce Lee okay I was at uh, internetarchive.org <coughs> I thought I'd just for fun I'll type in Bruce Lee, see, see if they've got any uh, video or audio on him. Right, and I found this. One of several, um, or many, radio articles about the late great Bruce Lee. So we'll play it so you can hear it. This is 1A. I'm Joshua Johnson in Washington. It's something we may take for granted today. Action movies with Asian American actors in leading roles. Stars depicted as strong, confident, attractive, and admirable. Hollywood used to portray Asian men as foolish and emasculated. Think of Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. And then came Bruce Lee. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself to express oneself honestly not lying to oneself and to express myself honestly and my friend is very hard to do and you have to train you have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it it's there bruce lee had everything an action star needed good looks a magnetic presence an impossibly athletic body and an almost magical speed in fight scenes he died just one, just a few months before his big hit, Enter the Dragon, debuted. His legacy remains strong nearly 45 years after his death. But how did this American original, and yes, he is American, born in San Francisco, become an icon? We asked you what Bruce Lee means to you. Here is some of what you left in our inbox. Hi, this is Blake from Miami. It was a ritual for my father and I to watch Bruce Lee's movies when I was young. The love that I developed for Chinese culture and philosophy inspired me to move to China. I lived there for 10 years, met my wife, and trained in my career. I guess you could say that Bruce Lee really put me on my path. My name is Rianda. I live in Connecticut. And as a, a youth, my grandmother and I would go to the Fox Theater in Detroit, Michigan, and we would go look at Bruce Lee martial art movies. We so, I so enjoyed those times and they were very dear and special with me because I took martial art when I was little and I just enjoyed the, the discipline. But as a kid, I just loved watching the movies and spending that time with my grandmother. As a first generation Vietnamese American, Asian American, Bruce Lee was everything. Uh, wasn't alive when, when, you know, when I was alive, but uh, back in the day when they still used to show revivals on the big screen, I was maybe five years old when I saw Fist of Fury, 
and it blew my mind. Um, I wanted to be him. I studied martial arts because of him. Uh, I get into, uh, I incorporate his philosophy into how I teach um, and, and other things. He, he really was everything. Still is. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and recollections of Bruce Lee. We welcome more of them, as well as your questions about his life and his legacy. Email us, 1A at WAMU.org. Comment on our Facebook page or tweet us at 1A. Joining us now to discuss his legacy is Matthew Polly, the author of a new biography called Bruce Lee, A Life. It encompasses a decade's worth of research with more than 100 interviews with Lee's family and friends. Matthew, welcome to 1A. Thanks for having me on. I imagine you would not do this much work about someone who had not hooked you. I wonder when you got hooked on Bruce Lee. Uh, yes, I'm one of the uh, prototypical Bruce Lee fans. Uh, I first saw his movie when I was 12 years old. I was one of those skinny, bullied kids, and Bruce Lee jumped off the screen into my imagination and became my childhood hero. I went out and bought a pair of nunchucks and cracked myself repeatedly in the skull with them. Uh, and then it, it led to a lifelong obsession. I went to the Shaolin Temple in China to study Kung Fu with the Shaolin monks and became a martial arts writer. So like some of the people who just called in, uh, Bruce set me on my life path. And writing this book was my way of paying back that debt. You basically described me right up until the minute you left for the Shaolin Temple. Like, I, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I can still feel the dent in my head from where the nunchucks hit me. So that's when I was like, maybe I'll go be a journalist. <laughs> you can listen to the rest of this interview. I'll put the link to this at the bottom of um, my video. And when you subscribe and add your comments in the comment section, you can tell us how much you enjoyed it. Okay, we'll go back because I did find some more that was quite interesting though. Hopefully, it was interesting for you. These um, looks like these plenty here to listen to okay different radio stations that had um, different audio on Bruce Lee okay okay look pretty much the same same title so we'll look for something um, Hopefully that he said. Okay, Matthew Polly. Bruce Lee. He died a month before the film's U.S. release ahead. The lasting influence of Bruce Lee. Then at 9 o'clock, it's open air. Join us today at noon. We have a live session with Olivia Cheney. Also coming up this morning, Jade Bird, Brett Denon, and The War in Treaty. Today in the Southern Oregon Cascades and Siskiyou's patchy smoke, otherwise sunny. High should be near 76. Smoky with sun in Wairika and highs in the mid-90s. Patchy smoke. And we believe that uh, we're at the end of that period. And we've just let the governor know about the response that HUD has approved. Based on what's in Sunny, I should be near 76. Public Radio, online, find us at ijpr.org. Up ahead, when Morning Edition continues, the seminal martial arts film Enter the Dragon premiered 45 years ago this weekend. It starred Bruce Lee. He died a month before the film's U.S. release ahead. The lasting influence of Bruce Lee. Then at 9 o'clock. Couple more. The trouble losing weight, maybe you lose fifty, maybe you lose, need to lose just ten pounds. Give Josh Powell at Medi Weight Loss a call. Three oh three five one eight. 3677. Josh Powell doesn't pretend his. Okay, I don't think that one really had anything to do with Bruce Lee. Um, okay, so we'll find one more. Okay. You can go through it yourself. 
if you're interested in it and have a listen in your own time. Okay, it's the same sort of information as the other ones. So we'll go. The groundbreaking martial arts movie Enter the Dragon opened in the US 45 years ago this week. That movie was supposed to make Bruce Lee a star, but a month before it came out, Bruce Lee died, and instead of becoming a star, he became a legend. NPR's Justin Richmond has the story. When Enter the Dragon premiered in August 1973, it was exactly what martial artist Bruce Lee had been waiting for, a starring role in a Hollywood production. Kung Fu meets black exploitation and all action, Enter the Dragon was a hit at the box office and sparked an explosion of martial arts movies. After a recent sold out evening at the Los Angeles Central Library honoring Bruce Lee, his daughter Shannon said Enter the Dragon was everything her father had been working towards. Enter the Dragon was really like a very precious project for him and the one that he had been waiting for. Before martial arts films, Bruce Lee was a child actor in Hong Kong, mostly dramatic roles. One film, The Orphan, made the teenage Bruce Lee a bit of a celebrity there. But any fame he had quickly disappeared when he left Hong Kong to return to San Francisco, the city where he was born. His family felt he was getting into trouble in Hong Kong, so he headed back to the U.S. to become a martial arts instructor. He didn't plan on acting, but was eventually discovered by TV producer William Dozier. I am Bruce Lee, inviting you to join me every Friday night on most of these ABC stations, where I'll be seeing you in the Green Hornet. Dozier, who produced the popular Batman TV series, cast Bruce Lee as sidekick Kato in the Green Hornet. Is it bad? Yeah. Can you get those clothes off? There's a hospital close by. You need a doctor. The show debuted on ABC on September 9th, 1966, Coincidentally, the day after the original Star Trek series featuring George Takei as Sulu premiered. Both shows cast Asian-American males as prominent characters on TV. Jeff Yang, writer and co-host of the podcast They Call Us Bruce, says this is significant. Up until The Green Hornet, it really was pretty much a wasteland as far as Asian-American continuous representation on television. But The Green Hornet didn't catch on and lasted just a season. After a few more small roles, Lee was ready to play a new character. Matthew Pauly wrote the new biography, Bruce Lee, A Life. What Bruce Lee wanted to do was to create a heroic Asian male character, but it simply didn't exist. There were only two types of roles, Fu Manchu, the villain, and Charlie Chan, the model minority. And both of these characters were played by white actors in multiple films during the 50s and 60s. After not finding much success in Hollywood, Lee went back to Hong Kong for a family visit. He was greeted at the airport by producers eager to cast him. The Green Hornet had been playing in Hong Kong, only it was known as The Cato Show. Lee was a star there and resumed his movie career, this time making three martial arts films, The Big Boss, Fist of Fury, and The Way of the Dragon. All were hits in Hong Kong, so Lee reached out to a producer he knew at Warner Brothers. Which is where Enter the Dragon comes in. A co-production between Lee's Hong Kong studio Golden Harvest and Warner Brothers, it's the first martial arts film co-produced by an American studio. Bruce Lee was finally the heroic star of a Hollywood movie. And he kicked butt. But a month before the film's US release, Bruce Lee died. He didn't get to see the lasting influence it would have. Again, just yet. Without End of the Dragon, most of the video games most of the television shows and films that have come afterwards would not be the same. Phil, you was the co-host of They Call Us Bruce. You know, we take for granted now that Hollywood action movies, they have martial arts, they have fight choreography, they, they do all this amazing stuff, but before then, we hadn't really seen martial arts in that context in a Hollywood film. Bruce Lee and Enter the Dragon also had a significant impact on music. His name is littered throughout dozens of rap songs, but his influence on rap music is most strong with the influential rap group The Wu-Tang Clan. Do you think your Wu-Tang sword can defeat me? Their landmark debut album is called Enter the Wu-Tang in honor of Lee's last film. Here's Ghostface Killer and the RZA of Wu-Tang Clan. They say Enter the Dragon ignited their interest in the martial arts. It was like, you watch it, they come outside. 
Man, I used to bang my hands on the wall trying to get iron palms, scrape my hand with beans. I, I, I got a stress box on my shoulders because of kung fu things I was trying to do. 45 years after his death, and Bruce Lee still turns up all over popular culture. Just this week, Quentin Tarantino announced a new actor in his upcoming 1969 period piece, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The role? Bruce Lee. Yeah, Justin what a Richmond, shame. NPR. I really put him down. Made him look like an idiot. This is Aspen Public Radio broadcasting on KAJX Aspen and KCJX Carbondale. Okay. So there's plenty there to hear. Um, might actually be books as well. Uh, okay, let's have a look here. It's radio transcripts. Okay, let's see if we can find some text content. Okay. Here's some books on him. What's that? The Dow of Bruce Lee. Kung Fu Cult Masters. I don't know if that's anything to do with him. He's probably in it somewhere. Um, what's this? Bruce Lee's Fighting Methods. Chinese Kung Fu. Is this an article? Game of Death. Um, interview. see it I think it might be in French or something I can't really see it okay uh, martial arts movies karate there's a lot of stuff here who killed Bruce Lee I've actually got this book pretty good uh, I got this PDF it's not too bad okay um, there's one I first had as a kid but I don't think it's here it just has face on it um, I think it was written by Linda Lee. Okay. You got most of these PDFs. Okay. Bruce Exploitation. This is Bruce Lee, Bruce La, Bruce Low, whatever he is called. Um, this one of Brandon Lee. What's his, uh, what's his name? Zaitoichi. Yeah, I like those films. I found a whole suitcase of Japanese um, samurai films up the street, so I grabbed them and kept them. Okay. Um uh, what's this? Kung Fu Monthly. Who killed Bruce Lee? There's one here that I had that they're not showing. It's got that picture. I found it in a second hand shop when I was a kid. Going to school, right? Interesting stuff. Let's have a peek at one of them. Dragon and the Tiger, the Battle of Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Let's see what it says. Can get there. Okay, is it showing? Can I show anything? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, go back. Martial art movies from Bruce Lee to the ninjas. I think Shokazuki was the best one. The American ones were like, they look really ridiculous. Here's a book on Wing Chun. Okay, is he going to show it? Probably not. Oh, yeah, okay. 116 Wing Chun dummy techniques. This is uh, what the first one said he trained in. The, the man, yep, man. Um, Shit Kin. See his name, Shitkin? And Bruce Lee together during a break in the film of Into the Dragon. Yeah, um, he played the villain. Apparently this guy had... He was master in 33 different martial arts. Yeah, that's what I read in one of these Bruce Lee books. Um, yeah, he played the evil Han. Okay, well, that's the beginning of the book, is it? Uh, the end of the book. Okay. Let's have a little peek. See what we got here. There he is. There, who oh, actually had here. I must have uh, lost it later on. Eh? Okay, might make this a bit bigger. Not too big. Have a quick um, look at it. 
there is showing on the uh, wooden dummy. Jeez, looks like a very old book. Old techniques. Interesting. Okay, we'll go ahead here. Okay. It's his son. Yip Chin. I think he's still alive today and like he's really really good at it. He didn't want to learn it at first apparently but he eventually buckled it. Probably glad he did. Carried on his father's legacy. Brilliant. Okay, so something up Bruce Lee here. Bruce Lee returned to USA feeling bored. He didn't teach Wing Chun or Wing Chun anymore because he knew that he would never become the number one man in Wing Chun. In order to s succeed in his career, he had to set up a new style and became the founder himself. So he formulated his technique at the Chi Kune Do, which he taught his own students and for which he became famous. However, the techniques of this of his chi kune do, uh, as observed on screens, were in fact mainly based on the techniques of Wing Chun, combined with Taekwondo, and Karate, with some more Western boxing, Judo, and Northern Praying Mantis, Kung Fu. His theories, as released on newspapers, books, and magazines, were mostly the theories of Wing Chun. Then added up some Chinese philosophies of Taoism as well as some theories of Western boxing or judo, where Bruce Lee became famous for his Jeet Kune Do. This uh, thing might be Yip Chin talking. My father about the band. My father never mentioned Bruce Lee. He even did not like people talking about Bruce Lee in front of him. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Low guard style movement in as demonstrated by Master Yip Chun. Yeah, tried um, Wing Chun for a while then when I was younger. It's actually quite good. Uh, no, strength involved, no, because it was created by, uh, was developed by a woman apparently. Uh, Wing Chun, way back in the ancient days of Chinese days, you know, martial arts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, she was taught by a nun, supposedly, and went on from there. Okay, here's all the uh, Chinese names. Okay, Park Sao, uh, Dan Sao, probably all that sort of stuff in there. Um, <laughs> I see. I was looking at a um, leaflet for uh, something. I can't remember what it was with the Chinese guy. And um, it said Sifu or something, and he says, Nah, nah, nah. It's not Sifu. Shifu. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a hard nut. Okay, um, here we go. Master Lung Ting. And then there's the other one, um, what's his name? Uh, William Chung. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I tried um, uh, traditional, no, no, sorry, um, modified Wing Chun system. And where I was, the people were very nice, you know. Um, just okay, but they were very nice. And I went back to um, my hometown and took up um, the traditional Wing Chun and really liked it for a while there. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so that's a book on Bruce Lee and Wing Chun, his art. The first, one of the arts he first um, got himself involved with. Okay, he's in popular magazines. Okay. Yeah, so it's all there for you to read. It says Marching Orders. The Untold Story of the uh, World War. Yeah, okay. Um, his first published book, I think, Chinese Kung Fu, in English. It's just, I don't know what that is. It, uh, it's a, I don't know what language it is. Okay, um, yeah, really good book, expressing the art of the human, expressing the human body. 
yeah really good see you can uh, if you don't want to buy it you can um, if it shows up it might just be my computer but if it shows up here you can read it okay I can't see it so maybe it's one of those ones you have to loan they've got a loan aspect okay um that's we got here fighting methods that may show up may not here we go okay skip through this so you can have a look he yeah. used to have all these books was a avid Bruce Lee fan but um I woke up one day, he had a, had a stand, proper starts how to punch correctly, the comparisons between a karate punch and a um, kung fu punch, uh, a karate punch is like wang and it hurt inside, a kung fu punch is like a, a bow for chain attached, uh, you go wang and hurt inside or something, whatever he said, that sort of line, you know, um, on his interview, yeah, it's quite a character. He used to be, avid, as I say, used to be an avid Bruce Lee fan, um, and then I woke up and realised behind the scenes through research, personal research, and study, and reading these books, what it was really like. The Matthew Polly one, I think it is really um, reveals what he was really like. You know, yeah. So celebrity charisma, you know, all the ability he had was true, but because of his back pain and the cortisone and things he was taking right you know, steroids and stuff like that um, yeah he had you know, rages and stuff and uh, he was just you know, arrogant whatever he had problems issues you know because um, apparently that stuff yeah, it does that to go read Matthew Polly's book um, Bruce Lee I think I can't remember the name of it. I've got it on PDF. Yeah, here's all the techniques. Him and um, Dan and Santo, Filipino. Skilled in um, Anderson and Carly, apparently. Yeah. Best friend, I suppose. The guy got a lucky hidden one day. Yeah, upset Bruce Lee, but. Because he thought he was invincible. No one could touch him. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. I'm going to read that book. Instead of having to buy it, you can have a look at it here. Right, good stuff, right? Okay, let's see if we can find another one. Oh, it's another one here. Muscle and fitness, get ripped like Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah. Okay, if it turns up. Here we go. Okay, get through all the ads. Advertising about Bruce Lee stuff, I suppose. It's all the ads. Half the magazine's ads. Okay, article about Bruce Lee. This is where he's trying out a new character, the classical Chinese uh, you know, historical characters or whatever it was. Yeah. There's Charles Bronson, Diesel Clint, uh, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, The Rock. I think this might be Fred Brown. I know this black guy and um, those black exploitation movies in the 70s, 80s. James Kahn, Steve McQueen. I guess they were all um, influenced by him, right? You got, yeah, how tough they were. Uh, Bruce Lee considered this guy Steve McQueen, tough son of a gun. You know, you uh, got in his face, he'd punch you out. Yeah, you didn't mess around. It's either Jim Brown or the other guy. I can't remember the other guy that was on. Um, Big black guy with a moustache. I think that might be Fred, something on um, Dawn. Of the, uh, what's it called? From Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> yeah, I think this might be Jim Brown. Anyway, moving on. Get more freaking ads. So I hate buying those sort of magazines. I never buy them anymore. Joe Rogan, he kickboxer. Okay, some chick who's this. I don't know. Never heard of him. Looks okay. More blooming ads. The whole magazine is just all ads, you know. <laughs> they 
push you to earth. So it's a better way of reading that magazine. You know, find it on um, archive.org. But yeah, you're probably not going to find the latest one today. Who's that? Stolo? Get back there. No, that's Frank Zane. Got books on that guy. Interesting stuff. If you want to watch, you want to look at ads, <laughs> Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger. Yeah, look at all the ads, all the milkshakes, and you get Bruce Lee. How do you take what Bruce Lee was, a perfect, efficient combination of power and athleticism, and improve upon it? We take off the rose colored glasses and imagine how much different Bruce Lee's training would be today, and dare to imagine that he could have been even greater. Oh, for sure. No limit to that far. In his day, some sort of workout, Bruce Lee workout. Bruce Lee style workout. Right. Yeah, more stuff, more stuff. Also, that's Dorian Yates. Okay. Look at the good food there. Whoa, look at that. That's what happens when you take too much steroids, you end up being a cow's backside. Yeah, um. Yeah, it goes on and on. Brilliant. Okay. So, if you're liking this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe below by clicking the icon, be it the uh, geek with the big bifocals and the two thumbs up, okay, or the potato lying on the couch. Okay, add your um, likes, all right, and your comments in the comment section below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we've read all these books. No, as soon as we can. Okay, have a nice day, and catch us on the next exciting video. Okay, let's have a look at this one before we go. Bruce Lee. Okay, some sort of magazine on Bruce Lee. Bob Wall. All the speculations. Brilliant. Might have a read of that. Got posters near this. Must be like one of those 70s, 80s magazines, right? 80s magazines. John Saxon, who just sadly recently passed. Uh, died of pneumonia, apparently. Yeah, might have a quick look at that. Bolo, he's become like a Hulk. You know, with all his muscles, I think he's about 60 or 70 now. Yeah, he's become like a super, super hyped up muscle man. This guy here, Bolo Young, or Yang Z, as he is called. I've seen a few of his movies. He's pretty good. Pretty good. He's got like a mustache and a little beard, you know, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Bruce Lee did he have the secret touch of death okay so again if you like that please subscribe to our channel put your comments down the bottom there tell us how you liked it uh, and you want more uh, if we get uh, 2,000 subscribers we'll uh, put up another great video about the king of Kung Fu uh, Bruce Lee